Sandra Dean in the choir of the United Orthodox Synagogues of Houston wishes you all a Shona Tova, a happy new year. We are now in the new year season, the high holiday season of the Jewish people, where we once again recall why we are called into being. For once again, we must reassert the fact that we are God's partners in creation. God created us in order for us to help him perfect the world. And he calls us to account once a year on the high holidays to tell us and to have us tell ourselves how we are doing. Are we really the kind of human beings that we should be? Have we done what we can to perfect ourselves in the world? We're the greatest artists in the world because we can perfect ourselves. We can create ourselves. We are given unlimited potentiality to do great things in the world. Unfortunately, though, the same potentiality which can allow us to do great things can also cause us to do mean-spirited things and become brutal, vicious human beings. But we can. We can create beauty. We can create happiness. We can create harmony. We can create peace. It's all up to us. But we have to examine ourselves periodically to see how we're doing. Are we doing everything we can to alleviate poverty and homelessness and disease in this world? Have we done everything we possibly could to reply to the challenges of this world? Have we developed our talents sufficiently enough so we can make wonderful and enduring contributions to the world? That's the, these are the type of questions that we ask ourselves during this high holiday season. And that's what teshuva means in Hebrew. Teshuva has been translated into English as repentance. But teshuva really is not repentance. Teshuva means to reply. It means we, do, we have to reply to all the given situations at hand. Have we replied honestly? Have we implied with integrity? Have we implied with all our being and with all our might? If we had, then we can rest assured that we have truly made a difference in the world, that our being here in this world has truly made this world a better place, and that slowly, through the generations, this world will eventually become like a garden of Eden. We, though, must, must realize that we have a task in this world. If we don't realize that we have a task in this world, then we cannot do things that will make us proud, but instead will fritter away our energies in foolishness. I'm reminded of the story of a, of a theater owner who had a full theater, and there was one man who was stretched over two seats, and the theater owner came up to him and he said, Sir, you're going to have to get up. We need one of these seats. And he goes, He says, Sir, you're going to have to get up. And the, the person again says, So he called the policeman. The policeman says, You're going to have to get up. And he says, he says, where are you from? He says, I'm from the balcony. When we, when we fall, when we do not do what we should do, when we don't realize that we are heavenly creatures who are rooted on earth, but still creatures who can do great things, then we fail ourselves and we fail our God. May the request of our lips win thy favor most high. God who does perceive and hear our sounding of the show.
we are many times our own worst enemy because we feel that we are perfect, that we don't have to change, that everything we do is right and 100% good. This, uh, however, is never the case. Each of us can improve. Each of us can do better. Unfortunately, many of us lie. We don't just lie to others. We lie to ourselves. Perhaps we can even be forgiven for lying to others. But when we lie to ourselves, we destroy ourselves. When we rational away our faults, when we try to make excuses, and when we believe these excuses, we harm ourselves. Because then we can never confront our own faults and correct them. And not only can't we correct them, but we are doomed to feel the terrible pain and anguish which comes deep inside our hearts when we really recognize the fact subconsciously that we have done evil. And many times incidents will fly up into our minds and in fact slap us in the face and remind us that we should change and we shouldn't believe the lies that we tell ourselves. Why are, is there sometimes so much misery in the world? And sometimes there's so much misery in the world because people judge, people judge others by their actions, but they judge themselves by their intentions. For example, if I do something that's hurtful to somebody else, if I ask somebody, how's their mother, not realizing their mother just died two months ago, and I hurt them, I excuse myself by saying, well, I didn't mean it, I, I forgot. I judge myself by my intention. On the other hand, if someone makes a hurtful comment to me and says, well, how are you getting along on your job when you just got fired two months ago and you had been even been evicted from your house? And you have become furious because how dare that person insult you by publicly bringing out the fact that you are jobless and without a home. So we see that this is not, this is not the way that we should act. The rabbis say instead that we should judge ourselves by our actions and other people by their intentions. And that, of course, is the crux of the matter of the blowing of the shofar. Because the chauffeur tells us, listen to the unvarnished note. Don't try to adorn it with all sorts of lies and excuses. I reminded the story they tell about an actor who always was forgetting his lines. But one day, a, a producer had mercy upon him. And he said to him, he said, listen, it's very easy. All you have to do is say, hark, the cannon roars. You're going, there's going to be a cannon shot. And all you have to do is say that. He practiced and practiced and practiced. And the great day came. The cannon roared, and he turned around and said, what the heck was that? Unfortunately, that's what we do with our life, too. Instead of looking truthfully at ourselves, when, when light passes us by, and we are consigned to, so to speak, the dust heap of our society, we then say, what, he what the heck was that? Man comes from dust and ends in dust. He wins his bread at the risk of his life. Is like the potsherd that breaks, the grass that withers, the flowers that fade. But thou art the king, the everlasting God. Oh, 
something missing in us and that we must do certain things to make ourselves complete again. In fact, the rabbis say that originally Adam was hermaphrodite, androgynous, that the original Adam was both male and female, and that man was unhappy in this state. And the rabbis asked, why was man unhappy in this state? And they, and they asked again, saying, the angels were there. The angels would give him anything that he wanted. Why was Adam unhappy? And they answer by saying, because the angels didn't need anything from him. Man, in order to be man, in order to be a human being who's happy, must give. We must learn how to give. And God divided man in two. According to the Jewish interpretation of the story, Eve wasn't created from Adam's rib. What happened was is that Adam was split in two. Because Sela in Hebrew means not only rib, but it also means side. And therefore... A man needs a woman and a woman needs a man because they have to give to each other. And marriage is a great opportunity to give to each other. It's the greatest institution in the world, the rabbis say, because a person can do kindness, can do chesed all day, because each spouse can give to the other. In order to be a fully human being, we have to accept responsibility for the world. We have to be willing to give to each other. And unless we're willing to give to each other, then we're in trouble. What we must learn to do is to help each other in this world. I'm reminded of the story they tell about a boy who brought back a report card to his father, all Fs. The father took one look at the report card and his face turned to a scowl. And he said, son, I can tell one thing from this report card. And the boy said, yes, father, yes, father. And the, boy, and the father said, son, you didn't cheat. We have to learn how to treat each other with sensitivity and with kindness. On Rosh Hashanah, their destiny is inscribed, and then Yom Kippur is sealed, but repentance, prayer, and charity cancel the stern decree.